Welcome to another episode of the Fashion Masters Podcast. My name is Quinn Castellane. I am the VP of Block Therapy and we have Deanna Hansen, who's the founder of Block Therapy. And on last week's episode, we talked about fashion pain. So if you haven't seen that episode, go check it out. This episode, we are talking specifically about fascia and aging and our perspective on aging, how we see how you can actually slow down the aging process or at least age gracefully. So let's just start off with the generic definition. If we were to Google this, what is aging? And I can even just pull this up right now. So aging, we all know what aging is obviously, but it's defined as grow older, older, especially visibly and obviously so. Okay. So we're just accumulating time essentially. So Deanna, how do you view aging? Well, and that's a great question. And I, I really appreciate that definition because really they're talking about aging in referencing how we appear. And the thing is, and I remember when I turned 50, I wrote a blog and I said, aging isn't about looking 20 when you're 50 or anti-aging. It's about keeping your cells in correct alignment because ultimately what's important to understand is we all age differently. Why do some age people age gracefully? Others, you know, you can really see when they're 40, 50, you can see that time accumulating where for some people it might be like a lot later in life. Some people it can be a lot earlier. Mm -hmm. What, what we really need to understand is the position of our cells and how to maintain their rightful alignment lifelong, because it all comes down again to space. As long as there's space in and around each and every cell, there's ease of transfer of nutrients into the cell, as well as there's an ease of toxins pulled away from the cell. And if that's the alignment that we have, then our systems are flowing, everything is happy. And then essentially cells don't actually have to change. What causes the changing of cells as we age is the shifting of our entire posture. We are under this constant force of gravity. We compress, but we don't compress in a linear way. We literally wind down over time. And what causes that? It's the fact that gravity is constantly driving us down, but we can counter that by understanding how to support proper cell alignment through proper conscious breathing, as well as understanding correct foundations in the body. So if we all were aware of how to do that from the moment we were born until the moment we die, in my view, I mean, of course, we'll grow to be adult, but once you're an adult, then we start getting pulled down in mm. this compressive way, but we don't have to through that power of the full conscious exhalation. When we get pulled down, do you view that as being almost exponential aging in a way? Because sure, we can be young, and, and by young, I mean, let's say we're a child and then we get to be a teenager and then we're in our twenties. When do you think, like, is there almost like a turning point where it's like, oh wow, now we're really accelerating the speed of aging? Well, and that's a great question because I'm seeing the difference in the generations. So me, 54 years old, again, I did not grow up in front of technology. We went outside and played, we hung on trees. I mean, like kids do that, but today the way kids play is different. Also, what's different today for kids is the fact that the mother today who grew up in front of technology already has a lot more compression. So as the baby's developing, the child is coming out dense and twisted. So I'm seeing in kids today that the way that they're going to be aging is a lot different than the way that my generation or the generations before aged. And I remember your grandpa, my dad, he loved watching old movies. And I would go into the family room and he'd have a movie from the 50s on and it didn't matter the size of the woman, for example, if we're talking about women, they were all beautifully stacked. They all had an hourglass figure because of their alignment. And they all just had this grace and this beauty to them and this youthful way that they moved. Remember when you and I went and saw the movie It? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this was really relevant as well. So now like the original movie was in the 80s and it's a movie with kids. And then we went and saw the remake in 2016. And what was fascinating, it was that basically- was 2016? Yeah, 2016. Wait, we're, no. Yeah. That was that long ago? Yeah, it was. Whew. Seven years ago. So anyway, so here we're seeing basically kids that are from 2016, but now they're, you know, 
80s hairstyle, 80s clothing, mm -hmm. but their bodies are twisted. And you could see how different their alignment and their posture is. So already they have less space in their body. And it really comes down to how we breathe. When we're breathing diaphragmatically, we're feeding the cells. We're keeping the cell light and buoyant. Think of blowing up that balloon. We want the balloon to almost defy gravity. It glows, it's round, it doesn't accumulate dirt or debris, but take half of the air out of the balloon, it becomes wrinkly, it accumulates dust, and it becomes dense and heavy, and it falls to the ground. So if we're breathing consciously lifelong from the beginning, we can keep these cells inflated through understanding, diaphragmatic breathing, and conscious awareness of posture. If we aren't conscious of that, pain, fear, and stress cause us to reactively hold the breath, so again, at what point does that really kick in? That will be different for everybody. If I had a really challenging childhood, let's say I was in an abusive home, that's going to be affecting my breath very differently than if I was in a home that was very supportive and loving. Mm -hmm. Also injury, like if I had a really bad car accident as a child, the that trauma. is going the, the yeah the physical the emotional traumas all these things all these things impact the breath and then from that position of freeze response we age from that position going forward so aging is so different for everybody because our experiences are different we are all under this constant force of gravity but when does that breath become compromised for some people it's in the womb for some people it might be a little later in life depending on our experiences and the support and the love that we have around us or the lack thereof so these are the things that really dictate well and and then of course there's all the other components like you know diet and yeah. you know addiction and all those other components that what are we putting into our bodies and what are we putting on our bodies even mm -hmm. these things matter so you see primarily the biggest factor of aging is the breath and how the breath can be manipulated through trauma, posture, et cetera, yes. and posture. Mm -hmm. So those are the two major factors that accelerate or is it de-accelerate? Decelerate. decelerate? Mm -hmm. I almost said de-accelerate. Decelerate. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to elementary school. And um, okay, so that's really cool to know because yeah, you're, you're absolutely right with um, the whole component of sure you need to exercise to an extent to make sure that you're healthy, strong, you have a great diet for your body type, uh, you're hydrated, not necessarily just drinking a ton of water, but you're dr eating the fruits and vegetables. If again, that works well with your body, but that's where we learned a lot about the H3O2 rather, rather than just the um, H2O, because then you're getting more hydrogen and oxygen from the fruits and vegetables. And it's more of that jelly-like substance to really hydrate the cells. So they say hydration, hydration is massive for um, just overall health and anti-aging. So when it comes to, and maybe you don't fully know the answer to this, uh, cause I know we haven't like studied this, but telomeres. Oh, I was just going to say the telomeres. Yeah. Okay. So the telomeres shorten as we age. So what, for, first let's start off. Like what are telomeres and how are they relevant to aging? Google ask what, what are telomeres? Okay. Let's, let's actually, <laughs> let's, let's, let's actually make sure see. I don't say something incorrect let's do this. <laughs> I'm on airplane mode. Here we go. Okay, so telomeres are defined as a telomere is a region of a repetitive DNA sequence at the end of a chromosome. So telomeres protect the ends of the chromosomes from becoming frayed or tangled. Each time a cell divides, the telomere becomes slightly shorter. That's really interesting. It's when a cell divides, it becomes slightly shorter. Now I want to know what causes a cell to divide. Um, eventually they become so short that the cell can no longer divide successfully and the cell dies. So what do you think makes the telomere shorter? What makes the telomere shorter? Uh, well, you're saying they're saying it, it gets shorter from when the cell divides. So, so what but, causes the cell to divide? Well, that's just the natural way that this, the cells keep us alive, but what changes each time they divide is the amount of space because gravity is what takes away that space over time if we're not conscious. So if we have this perfect cell and it has optimal space, nothing needs to change inside the cell. The telomere length doesn't need to change because each time it divides, it's, it's an exact replica of the one before, but what changes 
is our alignment over time. We mm -hmm. become shorter and typically wider as we age. So as we start to squish that cell, if I had a balloon here and I started to squish that balloon, now I have less space inside the balloon. Mm -hmm. So all of the components are becoming squished. And now and that's going to be what's going to change every time there's a division. Right. So if there was no change in the body, each time it divides, there should be no change in the cell, but the body changes because of gravity and unconscious posture and breath as we start to wind down over time. And this actually brings up hmm. something you asked me on the last podcast. We were talking about, you asked a question and, and you kind of threw me a little, so I didn't have a very good answer, but we were mm -hmm. talking about how nature abhors a gradient. And when there's an injury, there's a gap in the system. And basically we have a choice. We can either through conscious action of using inflammation properly, we can rebuild what was damaged. Or if we don't and we ice it, then scar tissue replaces it. And you ask the question, well, why is it, why is it scar tissue and not muscle tissue? So essentially it's everything because fascia innervates every cell. So for example, if I have a big gash on my quadricep and so now I've got this gap in the muscles, all these surrounding tissue is going to start filling in the gap right. with the fascia. It's going to pull it in like a spiral. It's like a black hole. It is exactly like a black hole. Yeah, but I can just like envision that just kind yeah. of piling in. Like even if there's a, you know, if, if suddenly there's an earthquake and, and the earth divides, like all the stuff starts getting filled in. Yeah. So that's nature pours a gradient. Like nature's going to fill in the gap. So the tissue surrounding the gap is going to start filling in. It's the fascia though. So all of the life gets squeezed out of whether it's muscle fiber, nerve fiber, blood vessel fiber, like all of these, all of these components that are surrounding this gradient, the fascia starts to pull it in, but it squeezes out the life of the cell. So just the netting, just the membrane essentially is what's getting filled in. And then that changes the entire alignment of the body. So that's one way that we go through aging and that will accelerate aging. If I have scars all over my body from injuries that I've had and I'm not healing in the most efficient way, now each time I have an injury, I become shorter and that becomes denser and that's going to drive me down to the earth faster because dense tissue, gravity will manipulate more than spacious tissue. So if we can stay as spacious and buoyant as possible, lifelong and properly aligned, gravity has way less impact on what happens to our body compared to if we're unconscious and we're slumped over and we don't heal in the most efficient way, which again, people haven't been trained to do that. So mm -hmm. we're all riddled with scar tissue. And it's funny because aging is something that we view as a normal part of life. And of course we're all accumulating time, but do we have to accumulate age? Mm -hmm. And there's a difference. I can become older, but we can also make our tissue more youthful through the process mm. of releasing adhesions, getting blood and oxygen flow into space th that's newly created and through this process of fascia decompression. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's really cool to hear that perspective over and over. Um, staying with the telomere thing for a moment, because like I went pretty heavy into Joe Dispenza and he has a, a, what's really cool is he has a lot of scientific research and proof on how rewiring your brain through meditation and changing your personality to, ch which will shift to change your personal reality. You can lengthen your telomeres. So how does that even become possible? And I, I again, I know you're not like a, a scientist in, in this realm, but just as a fun discussion, uh, do you even know why that happens? Well, first of all, when we're meditating, we're connecting to the breath. So right away, you're engaging a different breathing pattern when you're in meditation mm -hmm. compared to the, you know, like the, the stressed hyper upper chest breath that so many people actually have as their normal way of breathing. If you start meditating, you're starting to bring that breath into that diaphragmatic space you're bringing more oxygen into your body and that's really what it comes down to you're you're feeding more cells more oxygen the difference between that and what we do with fascia decompression again is we release the diaphragm to be that much more efficient it was actually your dad years ago who asked me what's the difference between doing a yoga class and a block class for example um so i said well okay if we're doing a stretch let's let's just do a forward bend we're doing a hamstring stretch 
when we're stretching an area, the stretch will keep the length of the muscle available at its longest length. What we're doing with fascia decompression is we're adding more tissue to lengthen through releasing those adhesions that are actually gluing and distorting that tissue from the bone. So now let's say like here, here we've got the length of a um, hamstring because of the way we wind down over time, we've got all these grips and grips and grips. So it's like we've taken something and we've shortened it. And that's why we get shorter and wider. We're literally shortening the body over time as mm -hmm. fascia grips and adheres. So when we're blocking or doing fascia decompression techniques, we're releasing that grip from the bone to lengthen everything and to put everything back in its rightful place. Like if I had a towel and I crumpled it up, there's way less surface area for the towel. We want mm -hmm. the surface area of everything to be mm -hmm. as great as possible, mm -hmm. including those cell membranes, because the greater the surface area, there's an ease of transfer of food in, toxins out. And as right. long as that ease is there and the space is there, nothing inside the cell has to change. So that telomere length then doesn't have to change. And then when we give the cell that space back, the body is incredibly efficient at rebuilding itself. Mm. So the body wants to be aligned, it wants to be healthy, it wants to be breathing properly. We just have to train it to do so. And then the repair process is phenomenal. And we see that all the time with our people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that would be a very cool study to be able to see how we can lengthen the telomeres by doing block therapy. And if anybody out there has a connection, just throwing that out there to, to the universe, that would be really cool. I think we actually do coming soon. Oh, great. Yes. Cause that, that would be really neat. Like a lot of people ask for proof, 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 but yep. we go by the social proof cause we've helped so many people and the testimonials speak for themselves and we know, and we feel the changes that it does. And even looking at before and after photos of a face, for example, mm -hmm. cause everybody looks at anti-aging through the face, not everybody, but a lot of people do. Like that's probably the major dictator to see if you are actually anti-aging, aging quicker, or if you're just not aging at a really fast pace. For example, like my parents look decently young for their age and that's really cool to see. But for example, let's say we do a 21 day or a 30 day facelift program. Are we only going to be focusing on the face? Absolutely not. Because this is what people want. Like people want their face to look younger. Of course, they want the whole body to like maybe have more of that hourglass figure if it's starting to become more shorter and wider over time. But let's say I'm new. I want my face to look younger. I'm 45, 50 years old. I can start to really see the aging accumulating in the face. What's the approach? Well, and great question because I do this all the time. So whenever I'm viewing assessment photos and providing a program, knowing how the calves and the feet manipulate the entire body up the chain, we always start in the foundation. Once we've, once we've gone through that initial, like let's open up the whole body and, and get the breath going as our starter program is laid out, then I'm guaranteed going to direct people to one of two programs, which is a lower body program in full or a full body program. First, which, you're going to start with the breath though, right? Yes. That's that, which is again in the like starter, the starter program. program. Yeah. Okay. So, so you're going to say step one is go through the starter program. Yeah. Because the first thing we want to do is we want to open up this breath. We want to train the breath because then you become a completely different healer of yourself within. Yeah. So, and then we want to open the channels just so that we've got a generally more open fluid body. Right. But then when we really start to target what's going on in the body, we're going to look at the foundation because if I want to change the structure of my face and I work only here and then I start walking and I've got a flat tire on my right side and an anchor on my left side and I start getting twisted and manipulated, all the work that's happening up here is going to be undone very yeah, quickly yeah, yeah. when I start walking. And it's fascinating because when I get these follow-up photos where we've really just targeted the lower body, the change even in the shape of the skull, it's immediate mm. in that process of undoing what's going on in the lower body. So we do have to take a full body approach. Even thinking of the alignment of the arms and the hands, palms forward is anatomical position, yet everybody has their palms facing the back of the body. And this is going to be pulling the rib cage forward and down. So if we don't release the arms and the hands, 
Again, as soon as we go back to our typical way of moving our body, we're gonna be pulling everything. And as soon as I pull this, you can see what's happening to my head here. So I've got the main arteries right here supplying the brain, the face, this whole thing. We've got them everywhere, but these are the main ones. So as soon as I get pulled out, now I'm basically creating beaver dams to these blood vessels. And that's going to limit the amount of oxygen I'm getting to this space. Yeah. So we have to understand that the fascia by connecting every single cell in the body, if we don't address the full body, then we are, we, we can still make positive changes, but they're not going to be consistent and moving in the direction we want to move in. We're going to have to keep, keep working at it where if we can really understand proper alignment and support that, mm -hmm. then we don't have to be undoing the damage that gets added yeah. every day because we're not actually accumulating those adhesions every day. hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, that's so interesting because I think I mentioned this name to you once before. He's, to me, newer in YouTube, and I think he's just kind of starting. His name's Brian Johnson. He is taking the anti-aging protocol to the next level. He spends $2 million a year on equipment, on food, supplementation. He monitors absolutely everything. He uses all the new technology from infrared to this to that to like stuff I, I, I wouldn't even know how to explain. If anybody's curious about this guy's name is Brian Johnson. And he's he's reversed his age already by a lot. Like they're actually doing scientific tests hmm. on it. And well, there's many point beans of me bringing this guy up. Honestly, I think people should just like take a look because it's really cool what he's doing, but he's taking it to literally the nth degree. And he's saying like, first thing that you can do is like improve your sleep. Sleep is so critical. Make sure you're not watching TV or you're on your phone, like before you go to bed, cause that really messes up your sleep. Then he talks a lot about movement to some extent. He almost has the same workout, but it's like a full body workout. Um, and then his nutrition is ridiculous. He eats like literally to the calorie. So let's say it's, instead of saying, Hey, I eat 2000 calories a day. He's like, I eat 1,947 calories a day. Like I just made that number up or something, but it's something like that. But everything is monitored to that nth degree. Doesn't drink alcohol. He takes about a hundred capsules a day of like vitamins and minerals, which is like pretty extreme in my opinion. Um, but what was really interesting is he, he, so he was a tech entrepreneur, sold it for like $800 million, doing very well. He woke up broke or sorry, woke up. He was raised like poor and he noticed with his posture when he was getting things monitored that it was so bad because he was a tech guy that his carotid arteries were squeezed so much that they could determine how he was going to have dementia or something along those lines. And that was accelerating uh, the aging process and the blood flow was significantly poor. And that was causing a lot of issues with his anti-aging protocol. So he had to fix his posture and he did his own techniques and methods. But I bet you if he were wanting to add in another thing, it would be very cool to see what block therapy would do to help and anti-age him and they could monitor it. But anyways, there's lots of point point beans there, but the posture is huge. Like that's everything. It's, and it's so easy to think of just, you have major roadways. Okay. You have a forward head posture. You're twisted. You're literally twisting your major arteries and veins from proper blood and oxygen flow to the body, to the brain. So as soon as he fixed that, they noticed a tremendous change. And he said that was the hardest thing that he had to change for the anti-aging protocol was his posture. Because he doesn't have the fascia decompression technique. Yeah. And that's the thing. We're talking now about that 2,000 pound per square inch force of the fascia on the bone and how it manipulates us. So to be able to sit up straight, and it's not just about sitting up straight, it's about cellular alignment and what that means. We had that discussion on that already, but... That's the difference. It's not just about sitting up straight. It's about looking at how your cells are manipulated throughout your whole body and how you've adapted through your lifetime to this and how can we release that and rebuild it. And that's why we structure our 
programs the way that we do in our membership. So there's a, a release and a rebuild, a release and a rebuild, a release and a rebuild. We can't just block because if you just block, which is simple, blocking simple. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't take a skill. It just takes following a protocol. Diaphragmatic breathing, it can be a bit of a stretch to connect if you've been frozen for decades, which many people have. But again, the body wants to breathe this way. The body also wants to move the way that it's moving or the way that it should be moving. However, we create these grooves in our posture over a lifetime, like the gutter in the bowling alley, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, you throw the ball and the ball goes in the gutter and like you've created a groove like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So if I don't correct that and change that, I'm going to continue to fall back into that groove. That groove, is that um, almost like a muscle memory? Or is that literally a groove? Or is muscle memory a groove? I'm not saying you know the answer to that question. It just kind of popped up in my head, but... It's, you know, if, if you if you had um, like a clay base and you created like a little... Physical groove. Yeah, physical groove. Water's going to continue to go down that physical groove. And only get deeper and, and wider. Deeper. And that's the fascia. That's how the energy flows in the fascia because of the way the body responds to the collapse. Again, we build all these false walls and false floors. So these false walls are the grooves essentially that are directing. So again, energy should be moving in a wave. Once it hits a barricade, it starts to spiral and then it turns chaotic. So if I've got the barricades, that's going to cause the energy and the fluids and how everything moves to start to spiral. And that's the challenge because that's scar tissue and that's adhesions. They create those barricades to that ease of the wave. That's why it's so important and why people can probably see how difficult it can be to change a habit yeah. or because you have to not only release, now you have to retrain your fascia and your muscles, which is your fascia, um, a certain way or in that new way to rebuild it correctly. And it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going from bad to good. It's going from your signature posture, which is, created all of these grooves with signature signature posture. Was that the correct term? Mm -hmm. um, and then slowly just kind of working your way back and at least being conscious. So the first thing you can do is release, start being conscious of what your poor posture alignment and movements have been, and then start integrating that new alignment, the new strength protocols, postural foundations into your body. I think this would be a really cool time to talk about the concept of order and chaos mm -hmm. in our cell structure. Because if we have a perfectly aligned body where every single cell is positioned exactly where it's supposed to be, we have optimal space within. Optimal space allows for absolute open potential of everything. As soon as we take away that space, now I'm right-handed, I've collapsed. Now this begins my descent because, okay, maybe I'm three years old and I'm a three year old little crazy kid that wants to do something like, you know, like uh, that one that we d dealt with, with um, scoliosis. He was actually six years old, right, right, but he right. picked up the bow and arrow and like for hours a day, he was pulling his body into this one pattern mm. because he loved doing this so much. And that created a scoliosis in him. So what happened is he took away that potential for absolute space and he created a, an ordering of the cells mm. or a case. Sorry, I'm backward here. The cells are perfectly ordered when we're in perfect alignment. Once we start to fall out of alignment, the cells start to become chaotic because again, now they're getting pulled into the spirals and the chaos. So the cells become chaotic, but our behaviors become ordered because now I don't have that full optimal space through my whole body for potential for me to see every moment as a unique moment. Now I'm falling into a pattern of not only physical movement of thinking as well, because mind body connection is very real. So if I'm always this way, I'm squishing part of the energy centers in my body. The right side is the masculine side. The left side is the feminine side. What side is more open? What side is blocked? Are these patterns driven from me guarding myself? So if I'm guarding myself and now this is my posture, this is me relating to being 
um, vulnerable and trying to protect myself. And that's going to impact how I feel. Maybe now I'm going to be approaching the world from a place of fear instead of a place of being open and confident and feeling safe and secure in my environment. Right. So it's, it's fascinating because it, it's tricky to understand all this stuff because it's so incredibly interconnected in our behaviors and how we view things. What's really cool is we can go back to a traumatic event and we can actually change our perception of the, the event mm -hmm. and then from that moment forward change how we progress in time mm -hmm. when we can undo and we can see what that was and we can release that emotional patterning that was put inside our bodies mm -hmm. so like and, and we experienced this through our trauma program which was really cool to see mm -hmm. people were the, the forgiveness and then the openness and then the mm -hmm. ability to view life again from that safe feeling of being secure and protected instead of that guarded space where you know you're, you're always feeling like somebody's out to get you you know like these things are patterned in our brain based on the grooves and the patterning of our fascia all driven from the breath that's why to release trauma you can't just view it from one perspective from top down you have to yeah. go body up as well totally yes yeah because like the mind's connected to the body, the body's connected to the mind. And, and one great example was in the trauma program. Somebody had um, said that they recognized that when they were 10 years old and they sprained their ankle, that was the moment that they stopped being able to stand up for themselves. Hmm. Like that is how profound oh, like literally and intercon... Like, I, I, see what, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like defend themselves. Defend themselves, yes. Yes. Correct. So that is how profound though the mind and the body are connected and we don't and, and we're really just tapping into this like it's it's fascinating to go through this time and there's all this research coming out which is amazing um to start connecting these dots but it can get really complicated but it can also be really simple if you just see the fascia system for what it is and what we need to do and we end game the goal keep our cells positioned where they're supposed to be and if they're not which they won't be pull them back and maintain that space and that's what the process that we share mm. does for the body absolutely so kind of as like a general way of viewing aging and we're talking a lot about our perspective on aging how fascia breath the breath and posture is so critical for aging and anti-aging pretty well just in general what we need to do is also remove kind of like bad habits and yeah. that can be like bad postural habits but that could be literally bad habits bad things that you're doing for your mind bad things that you're pulling into your body whether that's alcohol drugs really bad terrible food, food for yeah. you mm -hmm. um and again like we don't talk a ton about nutrition because it's really dependent on on person to person you and i have a very different diet and we both respect each other's diet because it's whatever works for us so I think biggest thing is like start removing bad things and then start adding in something. Actually, you, you would almost say the opposite. Uh, yeah, I would. Ah, that, see, that's super interesting. Okay. Let's hear your perspective on this because I would initially say start removing some of the bad stuff because then the body will, now the body's not in this defensive mode all the time and having to fight off all these toxins and this bad energy. So this goes back to the habit piece though, because let's say I have a bad habit every morning of drinking four cups of coffee. That's not a good habit. I mean, I, I drink one cup of coffee and I, I think that's actually fine for me. But if I were to drink four cups of coffee, I would be crazy jittery. Yeah. But if that's my habit and that is so entrenched in the groove and my patterning now to me, that can feel okay. Well now I'm stressed. Stress causes us to reactively hold the breath. So instead of making that first step of removing something that's a habit, add in something that you can do, and then eventually that gets replaced. So let's even talk about sugar. For some people, they have addiction to sugar. Their, their body's craving it. I truly believe that when we are craving something, it's because we're not getting what we need in the cell. Mm -hmm. And people aren't getting oxygen. They are not getting that oxygen in the cell to make that cell feel sustained, to do its activity. Mm, so if sense. we just 
make, okay, I'm gonna learn how to decompress the rib cage and breathe diaphragmatically. Now your entire physiology is different inside. So then when you are ready to remove the other things, it's almost like a natural fall off. People ask me for years, because when I was 50 pounds overweight and I was going through this process, well, you must have changed your diet. Of course, over the years I've changed my diet and I still continue to change my diet as my body tells me what it needs. But I remember the moment when suddenly I recognized meat is not my friend. And it wasn't right in the beginning. It wasn't Deanna saying, I need to stop eating meat. Right. It was, you know, I started doing this work on myself and constipation was something that like was an issue for me, a good chunk of my life. Mm -hmm. And then I recognized, wow, whenever I'm eating more meat than normal, like this is what causes my system to back up. So through this process, you become more aware inside your body and you start to listen to what your cells are, st are saying. Mm -hmm. And then your cells give you the impulse to change things as opposed to your brain saying, I have to stop this. Because once you take something away from somebody that they want, they're just gonna want it more. Mm. So if we can instead add something in that's positive, eventually those other things are gonna fall away. Mm. Yeah, that's a really cool perspective. I kind of lost what I was going to say there. Um, what was the last statement you said? It was based on... Chain, well, adding oh, people, in something people are, positive. People are craving. Mm. If, if I'm taking something away, people are going to be craving that. And that's, that's really... That is very true. Oh, that's such a psychological thing that you have to get over. Well, and even think about something like smoking. Like one of the things that I learned about smoking that was so um, impactful was it said that... Okay, so we've got the hemoglobin mo or mm -hmm. molecule that has four docking points for oxygen. Nicotine actually usurps those docking sites for oxygen. So if you already have a body that's depleted in oxygen, you've got all these open areas for the nicotine to go and then that becomes the nature of what's going on inside that, that molecule. Mm. It, it's now learning that, okay, well, it's going to take that. So now you have to change that, right? So to say, okay, let's just stop smoking if you don't replace it with something positive like oxygen, again, your body's gonna be going, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, like I need it, I need it, I need it. Mm. So again, I'm, I'm not suggesting, you know, for anybody that, that's a smoker to do this specifically, but in my view, if you are a smoker and you wanna actually quit smoking, I think the most effective way would be to train your body to pull that oxygen in and to remove the toxins through the diaphragmatic process. Mm -hmm. And then more naturally, it will be a step in the right direction to getting out of the habit of needing or, or of craving nicotine. Mm. Wow. That, that's a really cool protocol. Like you adding something in and then your body will just naturally start to want to remove the bad habits. Even like eating an apple. Okay. So here's a chocolate bar. Here's an apple. My impulse might be to eat that chocolate bar. Mm. Well, how many times have I done something and then thinking I'm going to eat that apple and, and whatever, like, you know, you just get chaotic in your mind. If you eat the apple first saying, okay, I'm going to eat the apple, then I'm going to eat the chocolate bar. Now you've eaten the apple. Mm -hmm. You're getting some of that natural sugar. Totally. You're getting a bit of a fill in your body. You actually feel good because you've eaten something healthy. So if I do eat that chocolate bar now, at least I've put something good in my body first, but I might only eat half of it mm -hmm. or I might not eat it at all because now I'm satisfied and I, mm. I don't have that craving for sugar anymore because I've put something good in front of it. Mm -hmm. So I, again, like it's, it's a bit of a mind game we have to play with ourselves when it comes to our habits, mm. because these habits, again, just like the posture, they're so ingrained in the trenches that we've created and the body goes through that, like, okay, I need this. And the body doesn't really need it, but the brain believes it needs it. Right. So that's why if we can have these little, Tricks. you know, hacks yeah, almost, totally. we can, we can get around that a little bit better. Yeah. It's a lot of my friends will say, Quinn, you're, you're so sensitive to like certain foods and it's like, sure, I might be sensitive to it or am I just very conscious of what it's doing to my body because I've gone through heavy, uh, diet changes. I've gone through heavy cleanses before you and I have together, um, and you really start to appreciate real food for what it is. Mm -hmm. And you literally become more sensitive, but also very aware of what certain foods are doing for you. For example, gluten or processed sugar or dairy, that's going to mess me up. Like not, not in like a digest 
digestive and elimination way. It's literally in the anxiety that I physically feel from it. And we know that majority of your serotonin resides in your gut. And if I am eating foods that are just triggering my gut microbiome completely off, it's sending these signals to my brain saying, what did you just do? This is like toxic for your body. And now it's going to send those signals to my brain saying, yeah, you just ate poison essentially. So I think I'm just, yeah, I am sensitive, but I'm also very aware of what certain foods are going to do for me. And I I have this uh, actually, a lot of my friends are doing this as well, but during the week we eat really clean. This is more so during summer. I try to eat clean year round. During the week we eat clean. We try not to really have any alcoholic beverages. I try not to eat gluten, dairy. I do my smoothies, my juices, all that kind of stuff. During the weekend, have fun. And you have to do that because you have to find the balance as well of what is fun, what what is actually worth it because I don't want to just watch people enjoy amazing food and have some nice cocktails or whatever during the weekend because that's psychologically probably not good for you either because then you have that FOMO, fear of missing out. And you, you are to an extent, but you aren't. And that's why I think that's also very important is also finding the balance. So when it comes to anti-aging or aging gracefully, if you will, find the balance that works well for you because you don't have to take it to the nth degree of, let's say, Brian Johnson, where he will never put a cheat into his mouth. He will never do anything bad for him, but he's taking this extremely seriously. And two, when you have a system that is flowing and open and spacious, the body can handle that. You know, it, it, it can process things when That's your liver is point. clogged up, mm-hmm. you know, one bad meal can kind of throw you into a tailspin when your liver is open and it's a filter, it might just take a little bit of extra um, focus, but we're so efficient at resetting the body. And again, you have to think of the breath because if you're living such a strict rigid life you're right like you're you're missing joy and that will impact your breath as well like we are these bodies that like th- this is the container for the soul and i love how um biology of life uh, author um bruce lipton he talks about the fact that we are here to experience and i love that because mm. when i listened to this discussion he was having it really opened my mind and took away a lot of maybe the feelings of guilt that I may have had over past experiences that I've, I've, you know, behaviors, all of these things, because we are these physical beings given these senses to experience things. And it's not just to be, you know, the, the monk who meditates, it's, it's to feel, it's to live, it's to love, it's to try things, it's to fail. Like that's what we're here to do is to experience things. And if we're so specific and we don't give ourselves that opportunity, I believe we're actually missing out on a lot of what life has to offer and that will affect how we age. So wow, that's huge. And it's quality too, right? Quality over quantity. Like, I mean, I don't want to be the person who, you know, is, you know, 60 years old, but then I start declining. Like I want to live great until I die. Totally. I want to be youthful until I go. So have a good, how I'm viewing this is have a really good base foundation that works for you. And that might take you time to figure out. Um, It took you time. It took me time to figure out. So get your block practice set. How often are you going to be doing this? Sure, that can change. Make sure that you're you're retraining your breath to be a diaphragmatic breather. Make sure you find nutrition that's good for you. Have that as a base foundation. As long as I, as long as my morning is set and I have my certain juices, my smoothies, Um, I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables throughout the day. I typically save my protein and my meat for later in the afternoon or the evening. Um, that that's where I, as of right now, from what I've tested feels the absolute best. And then it, then it just comes down to experience that that's exactly it. Hey, you want to, you want to go out, you don't want to miss out on this experience. Do it. You want to go to travel to a different country for a month and they're not going to have the food for you. That's okay. Experience.
but try to try to incorporate certain things that will ground you a little bit, such as what's so brilliant about block is that you can bring that with you everywhere. What's so great about the breath is you don't need to bring it anywhere. It's built within you. So as long as you keep that as a solid foundation and you know that that's grounding, that's the healthiest thing you can do. Oxygen is the number one essential nutrient. Make sure you're breathing properly, you're exhaling fully, and your body can process better. Because I, I love that you said that. If When your engine and when your body is performing and it's optimized, you can take in crappy food because you can actually cleanse it quick. Your liver's working well. Your All of your organs are optimized to an extent. You have proper blood and oxygen flow so that you can actually eliminate the toxins and then bring in the new nutrients, the oxygen to feed the cell. It all makes sense. Yeah, and that's awesome because you're the one in control of it. And there's a paradox there, right? Because we are the one in control of our breath and our alignment, we can't pay someone else to do it for us. We can't give that job away, but also no one else can take that from us. Mm -hmm. So it's for us to do, but it's free because how we use our body, how we breathe, how we use our body is up to us. And that's so empowering because there's a lot of fear And just your mindset too. Right. Yes. Like it's amazing how the mind is completely directly connected to the rest of your body. And if your mind is in a terrible place, you're anxious all the time, you're worried all the time, you're thinking negatively, that's energy. And that's just quantum physics. We talk about that a lot. So as long as your mind's in a good place, you believe you're getting healthier, you you believe you are healthy, you will become healthy. And that's just the placebo effect. Mm -hmm. And of course the breath affects the mind. We already know that. We already know that when we're breathing diaphragmatically, we're connected to that relaxed state. And we can also view every moment in life as a unique experience that we can navigate in each moment as opposed to, oh, I've gotten pulled back into those negative patterns again and again and again. Like people break up and they get into a new relationship only to realize the same problems exist in this new relationship because they haven't changed anything. Changing a person in your life doesn't change who you are Mm. and how you relate to people in your life. That's the key. How can we change our perception, our perspective, our breath, our posture, our alignment. These are the things that we have the control over. And in my view, these are the most important things that dictate how we age. Of course, again, food and toxins and some things we have control over, some things we don't. Some things have nothing to do with how much money you have. It might be the area of the world that you live in. You know, like if you don't have access to certain things, again, you do have access to keeping this body breathing properly. 84% of weight loss through proper exhalation. It's not about the weight loss. It's about the detoxification. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so key for weight loss because when we're toxic, we expand, we become big and that ages us as well. So all of these things always come back down to the breath and how much power and control we have over that process. And if we keep the space, those telomeres, again, they stay nice and long. And yes, at some point in our journey, we will have studies done around this i have no doubt and we can really show the world that this is actually what's going on but it's it's understanding again inflammation the value of inflammation but what to do with inflammation because people's bodies are basically aging because of oxidative stress but that's really because of inflammation so we need to keep that inflammation which is really just directed blood flow but if it's we've got a cold body that's not breathing it becomes stagnant and acidic and it starts to break down the cell membrane and then we start to deteriorate in age so again there's there's so many different ways we can look at it mm-hmm. but to keep it simple that's what we do we keep mm-hmm. it simple and we give people a process to move forward in life and to continue to move forward in life and and again it's not about looking 20 when you're 50 or 60 or 70 because we're all going to go through changes, right? Like that's just nature. We're going to go through changes. And that just takes a whole experience out of life away too. If you just look the exact same for the rest of your life, it takes the experience of feeling, being, looking that age. And there's a purpose behind that. There's a purpose to aging. It's just aging gracefully. Yes, you don't, obviously you can age and look significantly better compared to maybe a complete replica of you that has treated their body like garbage over the year, over their lifespan. But yeah, I, I totally agree. And you can also take that body that has been riddled with stress and, um, toxic elements and you can undo that and you can repair yeah. a ton. 
we see it all the time that's, in, that's in what we're doing. So hopeful for everyone. Yeah. So I have a, I have so many more questions that I could ask you, but I'm realizing that these could be episodes within itself. Um, so I think that probably a great place to wrap up. That was a lot of information. So we talked a ton about the breath alignment, um, just toxic removal through the breath, through optimal flow and adding in good stuff to take away the bad. Because as you add in the good, that will pretty much just trump the bad stuff. That's you're, you, you won't crave it as much. I love that analogy of the, you're wanting a chocolate bar, but you know what? Have that apple first and then see if you even really want that chocolate bar. And enjoy it when you do. I mean, I used to be a guilt eater. So mm. when we're guilt eating, you're not even enjoying what you're eating. So take that moment and slow down and feel and taste. And when you actually take that time to mm. leave the food in your mouth, if it's chemical based, you're not going to like it. Yeah. You know, like that's the thing too. When we really take that time to let that breakdown happen mm. in the mouth and you taste the food when it's real and natural, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. When it's not, suddenly you're really aware of what you're throwing yeah. into your gut without even chewing and tasting it. You feel that the most after a cleanse too. Yes. I'm like, <laughs> I put this on my food. I'm liking everything almost plain with yeah. natural spices. It's, it's crazy. Or natural sugars like raw honey or pure maple syrup. We live in Canada, so we, we have a lot of that here. Um, but anyways, that's very, very cool. I have other questions for you. We'll save that for, um, other episodes, but let us know your opinion on this discussion. This was really cool. And there's so many protocols. There's so many opinions out there. There's so much scientific research. I think that's all amazing. But remember the one thing you can change right now is what we talked about today, your breath, your posture, your alignment, your mental component and your mental health towards and how you treat your body. And that's a big first step. And then the rest will kind of fall into place. So thank you very much, Deanna. That was a ton of fun. And we'll see you all in the next episode.